Consider an object at rest, such as a soccer ball. Apply a force, and it starts to move. Since a soccer ball was not moving before, it has accelerated. It has changed its motion. After the player has kicked the ball and is no longer pushing it, it moves at a constant velocity. When a player on the other team kicks the ball again, the motion changes. The soccer ball accelerates. Force causes acceleration. And acceleration describes how quickly motion changes. The motion of an object is affected by the sum of the forces acting on it. If the total force of an object is not zero, its motion will change. The greater the mass of the object, the greater force is needed to achieve the same change in motion. How does force affect an object's motion? This is forces and interactions. Newton's first law of motion states that if a body is at rest or moving at a constant speed in a straight line, it will remain at rest or keep moving in a straight line at a constant speed unless it is acted upon by a force. According to Newton's second law, when a net force is acting on an object, then the object must be accelerating. Therefore, its velocity changes from second to second. So when we kick the soccer ball, it accelerates, and when the soccer ball begins to slow down, it's again accelerating. Today, you will investigate and model these concepts through the use of force and acceleration sensors and a toy cart. For your forces and interactions activity, you don't need that many things. Uh, what you're going to need to collect is, of course, the force sensor, and you're going to want to make sure that you have the hook attached, and you need a toy cart with wheels. I'm using one of our code note carts, and just a note, if you have a really light cart, uh, your data may not look as nice as you'd like it to. You want to add weight or mass to that car. So if your car happens to be really, really light, you could either add mass um, or you could even tape like washers on the vehicle that would give it a little bit more weight. Uh, I have rubber bands that I've used to attach the wireless force sensor to my cart. Uh, I also have a measuring device because uh, the first run of this activity you're going to need a one meter uh, track. The second one you'll need half a meter. And then of course you're going to need spark view. Okay, so let's move on to data collection. Uh, this activity has two parts. The first one, you're going to be investigating Newton's first law. And then the second part, you're going to dive a little bit deeper with force and acceleration. All right, so I have my track set up, and that's just where I have a starting point of zero and an ending point at the end of the line here at one meter. Let's get our force and acceleration sensor connected. Uh, you're going to want to make sure force is checked under wireless force sensor. You're going to want to make sure acceleration X is checked under the acceleration sensor and you can uncheck this resultant here at the bottom. And then on the gyro sensor you can just disable that you won't need it. I'm going to choose the line graph display and you should have two line graphs, one for force over time, one for acceleration over time. All right, so a very good practice when using the force sensor is down here on the live data bar, the bottom left-hand side of the SparkView screen, you need to zero out these measurements before your runs just to make sure everything's starting the way it should. So you're going to look at table one in your student activity sheet, and it asks you to create a prediction of what you think the force and acceleration data is going to look like if we start collecting data and simply leave the cart at rest. So think about what you think the data is going to say. I'm going to check my live data bar. Everything looks good. And let's start collecting data. Okay, so you're going to take these results and you're going to answer the actual data in table one. For this next run, I still want to keep my two graphs, but this time I am going to give my cart a nice push and then start recording data immediately after. So start thinking about what you think your data will look like 
when you push the cart, then quickly start collecting data. You're going to put your prediction in Table 2 in your student activity sheet. All right, so I'm going to get everything ready here. This is an activity that really works best if you have two people, um, but I'm going to just do it myself. My live data bars look good. I'm going to give my cart an initial push and quickly start collecting data. Let's do that one more time. And this is a really neat trick that I want to show you guys with our software. So I wasn't thrilled with this run. It was a practice run. That's okay. So I am going to go down to the tools here, manage runs, and I'm going to delete the last run. All right, so I only have run one here, which gives me uh, clearance to go ahead and do another trial. All right, so let's check. Live data bar looks good. Ready at the start. Push. All right, excellent. That is what I wanted to see. So now that you have your data here, you can answer what the actual data was based on your prediction in table two. All right, for the final two runs, your track is going to be a little bit shorter. You're going to start at zero and end at 0.5 meters. I'm going to keep everything else the same way it was. This is two runs where you are going to actually hold on to the hook and you're going to quickly push the cart to the 0.5 meter line, wait five seconds, bring it back to zero, wait five seconds, and back to the half meter mark and stop recording data. For the next one after that, we're going to do the exact same motions, except I'm going to apply a greater force when I move the cart back and forth. All right, so let's get started. Live data looks good. Start collecting data. Stop collecting data. All right, so again, same thing, but now with a greater force. Live data looks good. Start. All right, I'm going to click on three here so I can show you how you're going to overlay this data, but we'll get more into that when we get into data analysis. Okay, for your data analysis section on your student activity sheet, you're going to need to refer to all the data you collected within SparkView. And I want to show you a few tips that makes it much easier to jump from run to run so you know exactly what you did at each one of those stages. So I'm going to click on run one, and this is when the cart was at rest. So when you want to rename runs so you can come back to the data later and know what you had done exactly, I'm going to click on the toolbar here, manage runs, choose run to rename. So let's do run one, change that to cart at rest. I want to change run two to cart after initial, or you could say after push, anything that lets you know the actions you did on that run. Let's rename three. Uh, you can say force and acceleration. I'll just put um, FA light force, and then run four, let's say force, acceleration, larger force. Okay, excellent. You have them all named. So cart at rest is what you're going to refer to for table one. 
cart at initial push is what you're going to refer to for table two. And then for this first one at force and acceleration at light force, you are going to need to recreate uh, these graphs in graph one and graph two. So the best way to do this is to show both at the same time, refer to the first one, force versus time, and recreate this in graph one. Then you're going to refer to this next one, and you're going to put those two runs for acceleration versus time in graph two. You're going to be asked to analyze this data to look for differences. So I'm going to show you how you can use the coordinates tool to mark points so you can see what the force was at that point and what the acceleration was. So let's just look at this run three. I want to know what my max force was on my initial push forward. I clicked on that data point, the coordinates tool, and it told me at this point there was 3.47 newtons of force that was applied. I then need to click over here in my key, and now I can access this information, and my max acceleration was 8.7 meters per second. So important things to keep in mind because you're going to be asked to compare these two runs what was different. All right, guys, good luck.